Hi everyone, welcome back to The Learning Gardener. If you are new here, my name is Pip and today we're going to be getting the house ready for um, having my niece and nephew for the first week of the school holidays, which is something I try and do every school holidays. Last school holidays, uh, because the previous fairy gardens I have built have disintegrated due to neglect and multiple movings and puppies, but mostly neglect. Um, the kids were creating uh, their own fairy garden in my uh, blackberry uh, raised garden bed and they called the town Delighted Berry but they were mostly making it out of terracotta pots and a bit of mud because that was not long after we'd have the, the floods and so subsequently Delighted Berry has kind of washed away. Um, and the school holidays before, Ruby was setting up um, fairy gardens in my pots. So fairy gardens is a thing that they really enjoy, particularly my seven-year-old niece, Ruby. Um, it started when I moved down to the south coast and I made a fairy garden and had it in a pot and she 100% believed fairies lived there. I think she kind of still does, but she thinks they're very much a south coast New South Wales, not a Sydney thing. But I thought seeing Delighted Berry had washed away, we better um, construct Delighted Berry back and we might place it in the orchard and then there's gonna be something wonderful there for the kids to play with. Yesterday when I was walking, we managed to find this, which is paper bark, bark. And a paper bark tree is a tree that only grows near um, water. So it's a good sign if you're wandering the bush and you're looking for some water. And apparently you can tap the tree and actually drink from it. But it's not very often that they're losing their um, bark and it's so soft and almost like velvety. And this is going to be really easy relatively to wrap around the terracotta pots as the base of the fairy house. And then I have a whole bunch of things in here which I will show you which are saved up um, from the last 12 to 18 months. Uh, I try and collect things like these big gum nuts when I see them because you don't often see them. And I had some ideas of things I was going to do um, potentially for like roof tiles and things like that to make them a bit different to what I've previously made. I've got loads of hot glue and I've got the uh, cardboard ready to make the roofs. All I do is cut out a rough circle and then you manipulate the cardboard, except this one needs to be bent a little bit, and you manipulate it so it becomes kind of a roof shape. And the, when you use leaves or whatever as uh, roof tiles, it's quite forgiving for any shape discrepancies. And then you would hot glue it on. I might need to make a couple of bigger ones, but we'll see how we go. So I'll show you what we've got here and then we're gonna get into it. One of the things I try to do with the roofs is I try to use leaves. So these ones are Banksia leaves and I try to get as many from the same branch or tree or whatever, uh, usually I just pick them up off the ground, but at the moment it's a bit wet outside so there's no um, viable options outside. Um, I try to get as many from the same branch or tree as possible so that as they age, they kind of color the same way. Um, generally speaking, a gum leaf will take about three years to break down if it is left in its uh, full form. If it's crushed up, obviously it'll break down a little bit faster. I've got some pine cones here, which are a little bit stabby, but what I wanted to do was come through and cut off each individual um, I don't even know what these are called, each individual prong and use it as a kind of like a, a roof tile, which is the same sort of thing I wanted to try with the Banksia pods. So on some of them, they've just fallen off already and the seed pod is inside, but I thought they could potentially make cool roof tiles. We've got things like casuarina seeds, which make nice chimneys, various odd shaped gum nuts and all sorts of things. And then we've got loads of different sized gum nuts and and these cute little um, things that come off the blossoms on gums and uh, I quite like these because I kind of think they look like a little hat that should go on something but we've got lots of things here apart from leaves worst case scenario we can run outside and find some other leaves but let's see what we can get made with all of this the first things i'm going to focus on is just getting the um, 
the paper bark wrapped around the pots and making sure that the hot glue gun works because I discovered it had been sitting outside with a lot of this stuff for over 12 months. So <laughs> hopefully it works. Now with the paper bark, you've got both sides. So you've got the side that was against the tree, which has this beautiful kind of textured color and this beautiful warm yellow interior. And it's sort of lovely and flaky or you've got the super soft silver side. Um, and you can see this is gonna wrap around a lot easier than when you're using a stiffer bark. And often I try and use, I try and make my fairy gardens around the time when um, gum trees are actually shedding so that the, the bark is actually fairly fresh and not too crispy and difficult to work with. Um, but I think this paper bark is going to be like revolutionary for um, making fairy gardens. And I'm actually just going to see if I can separate this because then I get two for one and that patterning is just beautiful. But I'm going to try and just slowly work them round and I'm just going to get this on as fast as I can if the hot glue gun is working. So what I'm going to do is work out which piece is best for which pot and we'll get to gluing because it looks like the hot glue gun is working. I don't know how the paper bark is going to go as a long term option for sticking to the pots. I don't know what its durability is like. I have found historically that the gum trees bark has stuck beautifully and not been a problem at all, but we just need to get this hot glue gun going and get things attached as fast as possible and try not to burn ourselves in the process which is something I often do when working with the hot glue gun. So I'm going to start, I want to get it nice and low. I'm going to start there because then if I get it low, then if I need to add any additional bits, that can be hidden a little bit by the roof. And then I just used wooden pegs to hold everything, oh, we need to slide that down a bit. Oh, it's already started to hold on. So that was a bit late. Just trying to position this so that you guys can see. I'm just gonna work my way around and get this last little bit attached. One of the reasons I was excited about having something like the um, paper bark that is so pliable is that when you have to use um, gum bark that cracks a little bit as you apply it, uh, you can often see a little bit more of the terracotta pot or the glue underneath, which I think kind of ruins the magic of it a little bit. And I, I prefer not to have that happen. So you can see up here, you can see little strands of glue and ideally if we can avoid that, that would be my preference. The main thing is to have a little bit of faith in the process as you go, because especially with the pegs on, it does look a little bit like a dog's breakfast as you're putting it together. But I've found when I use these more natural products, they blend together beautifully and they look lovely. And as like the leaves age and they change color, your house changes and it just looks totally amazing. So you just have to have a little bit of faith in the process and an awful lot of hot glue because you will use quite a bit in the process or at least I do anyway. I'm sure I could be more stingy with it, but I'd rather it holds together.
Oh dear, it's washed away in the rain. Poor delighted Barry. Even the well is broken. Even the well? Yeah, this is, was a well. Oh dear, do you think there might be fairies anywhere else nearby? Oh, look at all these beautiful roses. <gasps> What's that? What? Look, come and have a look. Yeah.